Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to be starting my little bit of a burner build. So I'm going to do this here in a, about a two-part series, I believe. And then we will see how it goes from there. So the portion that I'm going to be working on today is the actual burner tube itself versus the blower. I'll do that in another video just to take and break this up and make it a little more digestible. Because as you can see, there's quite a lot going on with the blower portion of it with wiring and bolting and things of that nature so i'm going to do this in like a two-part video series of the build phase and then i'm going to go ahead and do a test burner phase and i will show all the testing and stuff in the third and final video in this series so what we're working today is the main components of the burner tube itself this is the part that is going to be inserted into the forge. Now, the burner tube consists of several parts. The tube itself, which is this, at a 90 degree. I'll give a reason for why I'm doing it this way here in a minute. Your screen, your strainer screen that will go in, that is actually becomes, that's what makes this just a burner tube and turns it into an actual burner. And then your mounting flange, the part that the actual blower bolts up to. The last and final part of this actual tube here is to actually be able to put gas, have our gas supply in this tube as well because we need to mix the oxygen and the propane together to get a good, clean, healthy burn. So now that I've went over that, I'll go over some of the components here. The components themselves consist of two sections of pipe. The length does not matter. The length can be what length you would like it to be or however far you want the burner that the actual blower to be away from the actual uh, burner end or from the opening of the forge. So this length of burner tube does not matter. That's a trivial measurement. However, you do want to take and cut 45s on there and have a mitered 45 degree angle. And the reason why, and I've been asked this question once by a guy at my local blacksmithing club, why not just put a sweep or sweep elbow on there? Well, the reason why is we need to create eddy currents inside this pipe. Or essentially, for those who don't know what an eddy current is, we need to create a washing machine effect where the air circulates in a spot like this before it goes out the end of the burner tube. Reason for this being is that we need to have sufficient mixing of the oxygen and the fuel together before it leaves the burner tube to be combusted at the end of the burner. If you do not, it waits until it's in the cavity of the forge to actually fully combust and mix properly. And you get incomplete burn and you do not get as hot or as efficient as a burner as you could have. So, that is the secret behind this Sharp 90. The Sharp 90 causes that airflow to hit a dead wall and have to eddy or create an eddy current here, which mixes sufficiently your propane and your oxygen together before they exit through the end of your burner. So, this is essentially the theory behind this. This is why I've chose to do a welded corner that is a sharp 90. Now, if you can find a plumbing fitting, which I'm sure they make them out there, or fittings that have a sharp 90 like this already in them, then that will work as well. The point is, is you don't want to just sweep it through and get velocity out the end of the burner. Because, once again, you're not mixing the fuel and air good enough together to create an efficient burner. So my design is built upon efficiency and building a really hot burner. Now this is just done in industry for a great many years and for 
a great number of reasons. So I follow along with that. Now, the burner flange, there's nothing special to that. It just needs to match the inside diameter of your pipe so this way it doesn't impede and be welded on there. And then it also needs to match the outside dimension of your flange on your blower. So no big secret there. Now, if you go over to my website, blacksmithpdfs.com, you can take and get the complete materials list for this burner build. That is where I'm offering that with all the sizes and dimensions of what I'm using here. That way I don't have to overstate them and get a bit of redundancy in all my videos and have an endless drove of questions that I could have already went over one time. So, now that we understand the theory behind the burner tube and the way that we're doing that, the last theory is this end screen. Now, I've been told several times you don't need a burner flare, and I will contradict that every time. Yes, you do. For an efficient running burner, you need something that interrupts the gas. You need regenerative burn. So, with that being said, if you look on here, there are chamfers built on these. This creates, on the small pilot cones, a regenerative burn which there again continues to create a very efficient burner. It mixes the gas, it keeps the pilot bur burning, which allows the center cone to stay hot, which the center cone is the hottest portion of your flame versus the outer cone. And you'll see this in a little bit. It's the difference between having a burner that has a cone that looks like this with a flame that's loose and a burner that has a cone that looks like this that is tight. This here is a hot flame. This here is a lazy flame. So hopefully that makes sense. That's why these things are iterations. Now, last thing I'll go over before I go into the time lapse of me welding here and, talk, and voicing over, the last thing that I will go into here as this has been a subject and a problem of my other builds where I've done gas forge burners. If you deviate from the design, you are completely on your own. If you think you've got the better ideal and you've designed something that you think is going to work better for you, great. I am not going to be your technician and I will not think this out for you. I've come up with something that works. If you follow along and you do this design and you employ all your safe safety practices and, and use common sense, you will have constructed a really nice burner. But if you want to choose to go your own route, that is perfectly okay, but you will get your own results. That's all I got to say about that. So anyways, let's get into this little time lapse here, and I'll talk a little bit as I go on what we're doing and uh, get to constructing this burner. Thank you all for watching. The first part in doing this is getting the pieces laid out nice and square. Now this doesn't have to technically be square. It could be at a tangent or at a different angle. You can make it to suit your needs. I just like it to be fairly square. Now what you don't see in here is that I did not miter my cuts very well. So it left more of a gap in the, I want to say the crotch of the pipe versus the toe of the pipe or the heel. We should say the heel of the pipe versus the toe of the pipe. Sounds a little more attractive. But essentially, I was able to get it welded up the same. You just had to add in a little more filler while it was all. So now we're going to go ahead and get this piece set in. I'm just using a magnet here. Try to put that on there. I wanted this particular bit to be 
on the very flush front face because I'm going to add a burner flare to it later other than on this pipe. In fact, I'm going to use part of the forge that I'm building as the actual burner flare. We'll get to that in another video. So after doing all that, I'm drilling 3 8 inch holes in our flange plate. This will be the next process. So as you can tell, we already put our dis our distribution plate in there for our flame, our burner, our cheese grate. And then we got our flange plate welded up. And then in this part right here, I am essentially drilling a pilot hole. And then I'm drilling the hole for the gas forge, uh, for the gas pipe itself. This is all pretty simple. Just cut, weld, and drill. Time to catch everyone up. So, <clears throat> now, we've got all of our holes drilled. We went ahead and got everything welded up, like I did in the time lapse there. We've got this nice and flush. This will become our burner. Uh, the actual burning in that will get inserted in the forge. Like I said before, I went ahead and chose a little longer pipes just for my purposes that I'm looking for. Once again, this length and this length does not matter. The only real critical point is to have that sharp 90 degree elbow. Also, like I had explained, is the thickness here. Uh, I did not miter my joint well enough, so I had a lot heavier weld there as well. Now, with that last slide, we went ahead and drilled our 9 16 inch hole. That is to fit our quarter inch black iron pipe through. This is in the this is in the United States. They call this quarter inch black iron pipe. Now you can use 3 8 you can use uh, whatever here in this stay, but you but the orifice size that will be the important part of this actual burner tube build here. So this will be in another video where I'll show how we're actually going to plumb this up and get this all set and done in the correct orientation. Now for the final part of our burner tube as we get this rigged up here. Our final part is actually putting on the electric motor or the blower if you will. And as you can see, I've already done a little bit of work here. That'll be in the other video. But as you can see here, I went ahead and took our plate that we drilled all our, our holes in, which we drilled the plate's holes larger than what needed to be. These are quarter 20 bolts, as where the holes that went through were 3 8 inch diameter holes that I drilled into this plate here. Reason for that being is it helps with any misalignment issues that you may have or incur. Trust me, it really sucks if you drill a hole in the wrong spot and then you can't bolt it all together. The other purpose of taking and doing this and bolting this up now like this is that we can now figure out our blower, our blower slash burner orientation. Which way we're going to have this face, how this is going to come into our forge, and things like that. Now for my particular instance, I'm going to have this come in from the bottom of the forge. So the blower is actually going to be below the forge itself. So therefore, I want all my controls to be nice and accessible out like this. It's going to be on a stand. So this is the way that I'm going to face my blower, like so. Or if I get the fancy two, I might just face it like that. This way, this control, the on-off switch, is in a nice, easy-to-get-to space. And so is the gas valves and anything that I need to work on will be out this way. So I will most likely, looking at it now, I will be welding it up like this. The reason why this is important to do this step is because if you look at these, these are not equal lateral distances away. This is not a perfect triangle pattern on these blowers. Ask me why, I'll tell you I don't know. I don't know why they would do that. Maybe it's because of the way it was manufactured from whoever. This is a Dayton blower, uh, but it was made in China. So maybe in China, they don't believe this needs to be a perfect triangle 
or perfect equilateral space between them, but hey, whatever. I'm not them. So really, this is the stage where you set up what your finer, final burner result is going to be. So without further ado, I will go ahead and weld up this flange plate to here. And then that'll conclude this video. So, and then in the second video in this series, the second video in this series, I will be going over the actual uh, the build of the blower here and how to plumb up this portion here. And then the final video in the series will me sh be showing it in operation in the testing phase and how to tune it. So thank you all for watching this video so far to this point. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. So we will go ahead and weld on this last little bit, and then I'll leave you guys with an end photo of the final assembly so you guys can see how that looks and kind of a long pause. But once again, thank you all for watching this video and stick around to the end to see that final photo of the burner tube build. And here we go again, folks. So we're going to go ahead and get this flange plate all lined up here. I'm just using a bunch of them little 45 degree magnets that you can buy at Harbor Freight or just about any welding store. And I'm just trying to get this aligned. Do whatever works to help you get this all set up and tacked up. As you can see, having the blower kind of puts it in some interesting positions for you, but you can get it all well tacked up this way. We just remove the blower now, and then we go ahead and weld this in full. You don't want any free oxygen coming in from around anywhere. You want to be able to have full control of that. So that's something to watch for. And here's the final result. Looks fairly simple so far. Here's the burner screen or pre screen. And then there's the shot of the weld on the actual flange plate. I hope everybody enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And make sure that you watch for the other parts in this series. Thank you all for watching. God bless you.